Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. We'll be looking at some familiar verses. Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. Matthew 26, verses 69 through 75. We see you know, Peter denying the Lord. Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75. The title of the message is Christian Cowards. Christian Cowards. Christian Cowards. Matthew chapter 26, verse 69. The Bible says, Now Peter said without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them. For thy speech bereath thee. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And he went out and wept bitterly. Brother Caleb, can you please pray for the message? Father, we're so weak and uh, everything we do, we need your help to do it, Lord Father. We pray that you please be with us. And as we listen to your word today, please uh, bless Pastor Jay and fill him with the Holy Spirit and really help us and listen to each and every word of the preaching so that we can apply to our lives there. Father, we need the preaching. Uh, we can't go on without it, Lord. Please help us to rely on you at all times, not to rely on ourselves. So we can never, uh, we're never good enough to, to, Help ourselves, Lord. So, Father, we pray that you please be with us and help us throughout the day. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 Christian cowards. You know, coward is defined as someone who lacks courage when facing danger, difficulties, and opposition. And many times, Christians are cowards. Like you and I are cowards. When we're faced with yes. difficult situations, when we're faced with opposition, when we're faced with danger, you and I turn to chickens, you know, big time chickens. You know, we become a wimp, right? Amen. And nobody wants to be called a wimp. Nobody wants to be called a chicken. And definitely you don't want to be called yellow belly or white liver. And all these are cowards. And we see Apostle Peter here. And Apostle Peter, one of the greatest apostles, he denied Jesus Christ three times. If he's going to deny Jesus Christ three times, I don't know about you, you and I are no better than Apostle Peter. I'm pretty sure you've denied the Lord many, many times in your life. But he realized, he remembered the word of the Lord, and he wept bitterly, and he got right. I don't know what you're going to do today after the message. I mean, are you going to admit, and are you going to get right with the Lord? Or are you going to just hear another story, another preaching coming out of someone's mouth and just let it be done with it? And a lot of times people just hear it in one year and let it go out the other year. It's just not that important to you. However, for those who you do want to hear something from the Lord, you have to hear and take it to heart. Because this country will not be like this if there were less cowards, less Christian cowards, right? If we have more bold, courageous Christians out there, Bible-believing Christians out there, the world, especially America, wouldn't go down like this in certain parts of the country. You know, people are stopped street preaching, right? People are stopped standing up for the Word of God. People are stopped, you know, witnessing. So what do you think is going to happen? You know, where there's still strong preaching going on, where there's still Bible-believing Bible -believing Christians standing in the corners, right? That neighborhood is still, you know, protected, 
God has more grace and mercy. All, I mean, you, you could always say, you know, the end is inevitable. We all know that. You know, it's going to go bad and it's going to go down the, down the toilet according to the word of God. But that doesn't mean that you just give up. That doesn't mean that, you know, you hide the word. That doesn't mean that you hide yourself from standing up for the truth. When was the last time you really stood up for Lord Jesus Christ? When someone asks, is there a Christian here? If someone asks, is there a KJV only person here? If someone asks, do you believe in the word of God? Whether it's in a classroom, whether it's at a place of work, whether it's anywhere, have you ever stood up boldly for Jesus Christ? Because you are going to be provided an opportunity to test your faith. Because Lord will always test you. you know, throughout the word of God, Lord test people. You know, that's given. And when you're being tested by the Lord, I mean, do you pass the test? Obviously, in this case, Apostle Peter failed the test. But don't look at him only, just look at yourself. How many times have you failed that test? I mean, has it been continuous failure in your life? Because sometimes Lord will put you in a spot and you could only go one, or one way or the other. There's no middle ground. Either you're for the Lord or you're not for the Lord. And when it comes to Christian cowards, you just have to know that majority of people are Christian cowards. In the confines of this building, in the confines of where they're gathering a lot of you know, church members, you could be bold because there are a lot of numbers, strength in numbers. But when you're by yourself, when you're all alone, you know, how do you behave? How do you, you know, react? How, do you, how are you proactive? Right? At work, when things come up, when topics come up, are you the type of person when someone points out to you, hey, I think you're a Christian, right? So you're against this, right? You know, so you're against gay marriage, right? What are you gonna do? You're gonna be like, you know, you know I, I love the people. Is that it? Are you, are you going to be like, yeah, according to the word of God, which I believe is the word of God? You know, I'm against it. In this free country, I have my own opinion. Right? Amen. You could say certain things. I mean, you have to be wise about it. Yeah. But if they put you on the spot, what are you going to do? Are you going to deny? Is it going to, are you going to lose your job because of it? I mean, we have a lawyer over there. You know, I know he has an employment law friends out there, you know. The Lord will not give you anything that you cannot handle. That just shows you that there's going to be instances in your life where it's going to happen. And a lot of times it's out in the public when none of the church members are around. It's just you and the world. And it's you and the devil. It's you and the flesh. And are you going to be cowards about it? Or are you going to be courageous about it like Joshua? If you decide to be courageous for the Lord at any moment, then opportunity will come very shortly. Amazingly, Lord, when see someone committed to him, he will test you. He'll let you know, and he'll see if you're for real or you're not. Because we have too many fakers out there. We have too many hypocrites out there. They talk really well. You know, they're like, I stand up for Jesus Christ. I stand up for King James Bible. I stand up for dispensationalism. You know, I stand up for everything about Lord Jesus Christ, right? And then suddenly, you're put in a spot. And you're like, okay. Someone goes, hey, who has that sign in their car, right? <laughs> you know, who says KJV only? If, if it ain't King James, it ain't Bible, right? Amen. So who has that sticker on their car? Someone rushes in, right? And you could be a coward. You could be like shutting your lips, just sitting down. Maybe you're at a restaurant. Maybe you're at a gas station, right? Maybe you're doing something. You're like, oh, I don't want no confrontation today, right? You know, uh, you know what, you know, maybe this guy's not talking about what I think he's talking about, right? And then you're like, okay. And then he's keep on screaming, hey, whose car is it? And he's asking everybody, right? And then you're like, oh, please don't ask me, you know, please don't ask me. And then he comes to you and like, is that your car? Well, how would you respond? 
right? You have a bunch of other people now looking at you, right? They, he asked everybody. Now it's you, your turn to answer, right? If it ain't King James, it ain't Bible. It's that sticker, yours, right? I mean, what would you say? Like, well, I don't understand English. <laughs> or if they're asking you in different language, I don't understand Spanish, I don't understand Korean, I don't understand, you know, Mandarin, I don't understand Japanese. Or are you going to be like, yeah, that's mine. So what do you think about it? I mean, do you believe that King James Bible is the only word of God? Because those things did happen to me. I mean, people do see those signs. And one time it was Catholic priest. Yeah. I mean, he was well aware of, you know, Jack Chick as well. So we had an interesting conversation, right? They didn't believe it, you know, all those things. But he wanted to see whether I stood up for what I put yeah. on the car, like what I believe in. Like, we have this word of God. I mean, do you really stand up for it? So when it comes to Christian cowards, first cowards are avoiders. You know, avoiders. And who do they avoid? They avoid people. They avoid controversies. They avoid anything that will put them on the spot. And above all, these Christian cowards are ones that avoid controversy of King James Bible. When it comes to the Word of God, you have to stand up for it. It doesn't matter. If someone says, NIV is the perfect Word of God, you say, no, you have new idiot's version, yes. right? Yes. And then you start going through the verses, right? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. That's what the, Jesus Christ said. But you have many missing verses. And we always say it, like Acts 8, 37, you know. That's a real good one, right? Yeah, you need to have, they say, oh, that's why people think that baptism will save you. But, you know, you need to confess that Jesus is his Savior. Amen. So you go with that. You know, this country will not be where we are when it comes to King James Bible if we weren't for Dr. Ruckman. Yeah. Yes. Everybody could deny it. All the fundamentalists could deny it, you know. All the jealous people will deny it. But you know what? God used Dr. Ruckman to preserve his word. Amen. I mean, every, every period, God uses people, group of people. Yes. But he stood up, right, against those, you know, apostate, apostate, you know, congregations out there, right? Those yeah. Southern Baptists, you know, all those people, they're going with the NASB crowd, you know, or other new Bibles out there. But, hey, Dr. Ruckman stood for it, and then God used him, yeah? And then we have, his fruits are out here, I mean, in our congregation, everywhere throughout the world. And we don't worship the guy, right? You know, Ruckmanite does not mean worshiping Dr. Ruckman. Right. Ruckmanite, if it means that standing for the King James Bible, 100% perfect word of God, then you could call me a Ruckmanite. Yeah. Uh, that's what it means. If you are the type of person who avoids King James Bible controversy, then you're a coward as a Christian, especially knowing the truth, right? Especially knowing that King James Bible is the perfect word of God, preserved word of God then you have to stand up for it, whatever it is. There could be 100 people in classroom saying, no, 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 only original is the perfect word of God. But have you seen the original? You don't believe in God that could preserve his word? They have to be put in their place. They could always reason with you. But... When you know that King James Bible is the perfect word of God, you cannot avoid the situation. You cannot be that avoider, right? If there's opportunity, you stand up for it. If there's conversation coming up, you stand up for it. And I know our brethren, you know, love to actually talk about it, right? When I mean, you probably wait for it sometimes. Some of you guys are so gung-ho about it. But rest of you, how are you about it? when it comes to King James Bible issue. Because there are many, many Christians out there who saved, but they're using the wrong Bible, Satan's Bible. Yes. And when you don't have that conviction 
to reach out to them when you don't have that conviction to preach them about King James Bible, then you become a coward. You know, become one of those crowds out there. Right? What differentiates you and I from other Christians? It's the Word of God. Amen. That's it. It's the King James Bible that we stand in. Right? Even the fundamentalists, they don't believe it's 100% Word of God. They think it's the best translation out there. Right. But we don't look at it as a translation. Right. We look at it as the perfect Word of God. Then if you don't want to become a wimp, if you don't want to look like a chicken, whenever opportunity is, whenever you could say it, you could proclaim it, King James Bible is the only Word of God. Because yeah. you have to know it. And if you can't defend the King James Bible... Something's wrong with you, especially if you've been attending our church for the longest time, Amen. right? I mean, that's something that we discuss, we teach, you know, and we study. You have to know the history of King James Bible, where it came from, right? The inspiration and everything else in between so that you could defend the Word of God. But at least, even if you don't know anything, you know, you could always stand up for it. You know what? I... I'm a new Christian, but I know King James Bible is the perfect word of God. Amen. You can never take that away from me. You shouldn't be that person where someone comes to you, hey, you know, according to this Greek manuscript, according to those, you know, he Hebrew, you know, you say, you know what, I don't care. King James Bible is the perfect word of God. It's like you have to stand, right? If every, everybody's on this side and saying, oh, you know, King James Bible, no good. But if you're the only one here standing up for the King James Bible, you stand there. Yeah. Yeah, no one should ever move you. No. no money, right? No threats. No nothing should ever move your faith in the Word of God, which is King James Bible. But if you avoid, if you're that avoider, if you're that coward Christian who likes to avoid controversies, then it's going to happen to you. Let's, what's the worldly best phrase out there? Let, can't we just all get along, right? No, no. we can't get along, That's right? I cannot get along with people who does not believe in the King James Bible. I mean, that's the reason, you know, me and my brother, my mom, you know, our family left our old church because they didn't believe in the King James Bible. Amen. Brought to their attention, they don't want to hear it, right? Then sayonara, right? Bye-bye, adios, you know. You have to make sure that no matter what happens, you cannot avoid King James controversy because it is a controversy to many, and many people know it. Because if you show them, when someone sh showed me, you know, my mom showed me that, hey, I was using that NIV, and like, hey, you have missing verses. Oh, wow, I never knew. Because I never read that Bible either. I just carried it around. Did all of the, you know, worship. You know, what is a praise and worship? That's all you do, you know, at the secular churches out there, worldly churches out there. And I was shocked. Literally, I was shocked. I'm like, okay, so I need time to throw this away. You know, I got to use King James Bible. And that's the, after getting saved, you know, that's the best decision I ever made. Amen. Right? And it's similar story or in that ballpark story for many of you, right? You gotten saved and then you were seeking the truth and then you got to encounter some of the YouTube videos out there, you know, and then you're like, oh yeah, you know, King James Bible is the perfect word of God. And the fact that you're here and they're listening, you know, it is true and dear to you. Then, don't be a coward when it comes to King James Bible. Stand up for King James Bible. Stand up for the perfect word of God. Amen. Embrace it when it comes your way. Yes. I, mean, I would love to have any kind of conversation with someone about King James Bible. Right? First of all, if they were truly blinded by those blind leaders, or they're not even blind, they're just how should I say, wicked leaders. Right. Yeah. There, do you know many, many people out there, so-called Christian pastors, they know that King James Bible is the perfect word of God. They know it, but they're cowards. They cannot 
announce it, proclaim it to their congregation because they're going to lose members. And also, newer versions is so polluted and tainted. Yeah. You can't preach as strong like King James Bible. Amen. Yeah. I mean, instead of saying you're going straight down to hell, oh, you're going to the Hades, right? <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah. And then, and then certain words they take it out, and they could justify some of their sins. And when it comes to that, I mean, that's the biggest coward out there, hiding the truth from people. And if you're hiding King James Bible from others as an avoider, man, you're a coward, right? I mean, when God looks at you at the judgment seat of Christ, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, there's certain people who probably only will have like a, very, very low opportunity to get to know King James Bible. But you actually are living in it, and you are part of it in this ministry. Amen. Then you should be standing up and out of the way. You should be running the aisles, and you should be going, you know, every place that, you know, you know if there are Christians out there, hey, do you know about King James Bible? You know, if they're truly saved, it's the next step. How are they going to grow without the perfect word of God? Right. I mean, are they going to use NIV, NASB to grow? No. It's like eating a poison food. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You never get well. Right. You're constantly eating poisonous food, right? Then you'll never become healthy. But in order for them to get well, it's your job, it's my job, to tell them about the perfect word of God. Yes, sir. So number one, you know, number one Christian cowards are who avoid, and those avoiders are the avoiders of King James Bible issues, controversy. And secondly, these Christian cowards are assimilators. They love to compromise. They love fellowship with worldly people. Those are Christian cowards. Right? And we hear it, we say it all the time because it happens in people, especially if you work. You know, there's always happy hours, right? People always go, hey, let's go happy hour. You know? And you know what happy hours, what happens at happy hour? People are there to drink. People are yeah. there to drink and have a, their own, you know, fellowship in that way. Like, oh, you know what, you know, in order for me to really witness to them, you know, I got to participate in it. <laughs> you know, Bob Jones Sr. said, it is never right to do wrong in order to do right. right. You can't compromise. Amen. Christian cowards love to compromise. Great. They love to be that snake. Can you believe it? You and I act like snakes. Right? We become so slittery. We become like so smooth. We become so sleazy amongst all these people out in the world. And then we say, for the sake of gospel, I got to be at a bar. <laughs> for the sake of gospel, I need to be at this place. For the sake of gospel. No, not for the sake of gospel. It's for your own pleasure. Right. Yeah. It's you're just pleasing your flesh. I mean, how many times have you... Please your flesh in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, you always give it this excuse and justification. Lord, I had to do that. I mean, I had to compromise, you know, for your sake. I mean, Lord Jesus Christ never compromised. I mean, that's, I guarantee you, he's not going to tell me. He's going to tell you, oh, well done, you know, that good and faithful servant for compromising, trying to lead someone to the Lord. No. As Christians, you assimilate, you start compromising with the world, you are a coward. Amen. You got to stand up wherever you are, right? I mean, if someone tells you, hey, it's okay. You know, Sunday, 52 Sundays in a year, you could miss one Sunday, two Sundays, right? But let's go 
somewhere where we could have some fun, right? right? You know, vacations and stuff is totally different, right? You know, we encourage people to take time out, you know, enjoy God's nature, whatnot, schedule. But if this becomes your pattern, right, you know, and it doesn't have nothing to do with, you know, work or anything, but for your fleshly desires. You know what? I don't really want to see church people today. You know? And I don't really want to see them today. And, uh, we've had some issues, so, and I don't want to see them. So, when you should come to church, number one, to hear the word of God, Amen. to get your heart right with the Lord. Amen. Instead, that's not your goal anymore. Now it's time for you to compromise. You know what? You know, I don't want to see that brother. I don't want to see that sister. You know. Hey, humanly, that's justifiable. You know, human emotions like, you know what, you know, I have such a hard time, you know, seeing that person, seeing that brother or sister. It makes me so bitter. It makes me so angry. You know, it makes me to the point like I can't even breathe. And I'm not telling you a, you know, like a situation that's not real. It is real. It happens all the time. Are you going to be the type of person, okay, I could just watch it from home and I could do everything else, you know. Just ignore, you know, what the Hebrew says. You know, I'm just going to look it through YouTube. You know, they have a good, you know, technology now. I could hear very well. I could be in my pajamas, right? And then, you know, it's HDTV. I could see all the pores of the pastor's face, you know. You know and I'm just going to be like, okay, you know, that's better. I don't have to face that brother, sister. I don't even have to face the pastor, pastor's wife, you know. You know, my children, you know, they might miss church, but it's okay, you know. Conviction. Yeah, so those are the fellowship. I mean, those are the compromises that people do all the time. I mean... If your heart is not set on the word of God, it's very, very easy to compromise. Right. Yes. Yeah. Because word of God is clear. You know? One of the verses that we always use is abstain from all appearance of evil. As Bible-believing Christians, if you don't want to be a Christian coward, you just have to avoid it at all, any sin that comes your way. Amen. Or else, whoever sees you doing it, if you see yourself doing it, consider yourself a coward. Right? Yes. You do it because you're afraid. You do it because you have no courage. You do it because you love sin. You know, sinners, especially people who's living in sin, to me, I mean, when I look at myself as well, we're all chickens, right? Because we can't stand up for the truth. Because we can't follow the truth, right? Because we can't stand up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we become a wimp. I don't know about you. If someone calls you a chicken, and then they dance like this in front of you, it may rouse me up. I don't know. It should probably rile you up, too. And then they point their finger at you. But especially if they're not lying. Whew, they're doing it, and you, you can't even fight back, Right? Yeah. Because you've done it. I was a chicken. I was a wimp. Right? Yeah. I was that yellow belly. Right? I'm like, you're yellow belly. You're that white liver. Right? Yeah. You're that chicken. Quack, 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 quack. And then, wow, you can't do anything about it. No. Wow, that's, that puts you at a place. But can you imagine at the judgment seat of Christ, that's playing your life full of this, you know, compromised that. You know, you've done in your life all the time. You know, if someone says something against the word of God, someone's behaving something against the word of God, and they ask you to participate in it, you should just say no. Amen. If you want to go one step further, I'm a Christian. I don't do those things. Yes. I'm as simple as that, right? I mean, there's like always a story, right? Not to offend people per se, you know, if you're at a restaurant and someone goes, hey, can I offer you a beer? Can I offer you a wine, right? You know, you know what? I don't drink, you know. And if they like to continue, oh, come on, you know, have at it and stuff. 
know what? As a Christian, I don't drink. You know? I'm not a moderate drinker either. Bible condemns it, okay? Yeah. Right? You know, because we have so many compromising Christians out there who think that drinking is okay. It's not. Yeah. Right? And when we went through a small Bible study, God said, don't even look at it. Amen. Right? So, that's why. You don't compromise. Right? And if you are put in that situation, there's no way God does not give you a way out. God always does. It's just up to you to say no yes. to those temptations, you know, those compromising situations. You just say no. Simple as that. You know, I love the Lord. I love the Bible. I mean, I strongly am careful about my testimony. So I'm just going to say no. Amen. As I say, assimilators have no testimony at all. You don't have any testimony to fall back on, right? If people see you drinking with other people, how are you going to have any power? If people see you doing things of the world, how in the world can you, like, be out there and preach the word of God and have conviction and power? You know, we have, you know Brother Vincent, you know, my brother, and those people who went to PBI, you know. Dr. Rockman finds you, go to theater, you're done. Why? Because it symbolizes the whole Hollywood. It symbolizes the world. Yes. And you're going to go to movie theaters and come out and think that it's OK. Oh, I just watched Disney, rated G. Whoa, you know. The worst. Oh, man, you know what Disney stands for and everything that, you know, they promote. Yeah. And all those subtle things, little things, right? right? Yes, sir. Why do you think, you know, all this transgender, gender identity, everything's like rampant? Come on. Because right. people like Disney and all those people. Yes. Yeah. Those Amen. corporations, so they have their agenda and you're oh. like, oh, yeah. They only saw, you know, Mickey Mouse. So they're fine. They're not. That's my pastor. Amen. I mean, you want to go and come out of the theater. <laughs> you know what's the worst thing for a Christian to do? Now you know. I don't, you can't be a coward and be a simulator. You don't want to be a compromiser. No. So what you do is you try to disguise yourself. <laughs> you know, I need to go to a theater, you know. So what am I going to do? I'm going to wear a hoodie, hat. Maybe put on a fake beer. You know, if you're a woman, I don't know. I mean, you could have a lot of makeup. I mean, I've seen where, you know, people look totally different with different type of makeup, right? But what do you know? Someone's interviewing somebody coming out of theater. It's in a Channel 5. And suddenly you walk by. You can't hide it. And... When someone asks you, hey, I think I saw you coming out of the Channel 5 news, right? Was it you? <laughs> if you're like Peter, you're going to deny it at first. Yes. But don't be like Peter on this one. You just got to be accepting. You know, sometimes you need that knock on your face, like uh, you know, cold water slapped on your face. Yeah. And I got to wake up, right? But you lost your testimony, though. You could get right with the Lord, but you lost some people. Christian cowards loses people, literally. People who you, because of your testimony, who could have gotten saved, they lose it. They, they don't have chance through you anymore. That's what cowards you guys do. If you continue to compromise, you will never change. Then what's going to happen? You got a lot to answer at the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah. Man, you're going to have some blood running down on your hands. Yes. I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, it's a warning to you and me. Amen. But thank God that you and I actually can get right. It's time for you to like, make a 
U turn now. Yes. You've been compromising so much, like you've been keep on going to the world. Now you just gotta turn. You know what? I'm gonna go where the Lord is. I have to. You know, no turning back. You know, yeah. we we love that hymn, right? Yep. No turning back. No turning back. I mean, but we have to act it out. I mean, we have to be the doers as well. Yes, sir. And then thirdly, who are other Christian cowards out there? Anti-speakers. They're Christian cowards. Anti-speakers who? When you're supposed to speak up, you don't speak up. Mm. Right? When you're supposed to preach the gospel, you don't do it. When you're supposed to preach against sin, speak against sin, you don't do it. Anti-speakers are cowards. Right? Many, many times, even within family dynamics, you have to say the right things. You have to tell the truth. Yeah. But you become anti-speaker suddenly, right? Your husband is sinning, compromising. And as a wife and child, you should be like, Dad, you're going against the word of God. Amen. Wife is doing the same thing. As husband, house, head of household, you should tell your wife. doesn't matter if you have to argue for hours and hours. You're wrong, according to the word of God. You have to. Yes. Anti-speakers are cowards. Why? Because you don't want any fights or arguments. But you don't realize that as you avoid speaking the right things and the truth, you are causing other person to get deeper into a hole. If they're backsliding, they're going to backslide more and more and more. That's why if you don't want to be a coward, you have to speak up. You know, as much as for some it's the hardest thing for you to do, maybe you might be an introvert, right? Completely understand. But it's not you who have to do it. You can do it through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit, like, speak through you. Yes. That's the whole thing. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Even though your, your leg is shaking, you're shivering, right? Well, you still say it, yep. right? Yep. Then the Lord's going to take care of the rest. If someone's taunting in a classroom, saying all these curse words against Lord Jesus Christ, and you have freedom to say what you can say, you better stop taking my Lord's name in vain. Can you say that? Or someone who's always belittling certain person, are you able to stand up according to the word of God? It's up to you to speak the truth. It's up to you to speak about Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't be that anti-speaker, right? Yeah. You love to speak. You love to talk about everything else except the truth. You love to speak about every sports, weather, politics, everything, but except Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be that coward, right? No matter what happens, you should be able to speak. Don't think about what's going to happen to you if you tell the truth. Because a lot of times you become a coward because of the repercussions, you know, retributions. Let God take care of it. Amen. I mean, if there is a big, burly, you know, motorcyclist gang walks in the door, or if you're doing door knocking, they show up, are you going to say, hello, bye, <laughs> right? <laughs> or are you going to tell them the truth? I mean, if you were to die right now, do you know for sure you go to heaven? And amazing thing is, those are the people who actually get saved. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They're the one, the hardest looking people, roughest crowd, they're the one who get saved. Yeah. I mean, you're, and then you're in the other one. You know, when you see this little kid, junior high kid, ah, that's an easy one, right? <laughs> I mean, they could be throwing out all these, you know, bad words at you because they're really totally wicked. Yeah. So whenever it's time for you to speak up for the Lord, don't be that anti-speaker. You got to keep on speak for the Lord. 
You got to keep on speaking the truth, whether it's your family, coworkers, whether it's out in the world. You cannot be a coward not talking. And again, not everybody's born to be an extrovert. Trust in the Lord and just say it even though your heart is pumping, right? Yes. You know? I mean, we all go through the same thing as human beings. You're like, you're trying to say this word or phrase and truth, tell to someone, and you're thinking that I'm going to offend that person, our friendship and everything's going to be ruined, you know? Even my marriage is not going to be good, you know, for the next couple of days, you know? You know what? You have to say it. Amen. And then that pump in your heart suddenly slows down. Because a lot of times when you speak the truth, and especially amongst Bible believers, if they have the right heart to serve the Lord, the other person realizes they actually appreciate it. Even unsaved people appreciate it when you tell them the truth. Yeah. Don't sugarcoat anything, right? Does that mean that I'm going to hell? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then you could talk about everything else, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, but I think I've been an okay person. No. If you don't trust Jesus Christ, your Lord, and save him alone, you're not buried in hell. That's right. right? Simple as that. You know, as Christians, you and I shouldn't be that sugarcoating people. We should just tell the truth. Amen. And then always tell the truth. It might offend people, but you still do it. I mean, you tell me too. You could offend me. You know, I'm a human being. But you know what? If it's according to the word of God, you know, I'm going to appreciate it. Ask my wife, right? You have to. Or else I'm going to become rotten. You know, if you leave that little lump there, and sometimes when people around you know about it, and they don't take any action, it just gets bigger, right? Yes. That's why, brethren, don't be offended, you know, if someone tells you the truth according to the word of God. They want you to get better. Who wants you to get better, number one? The Lord wants you to get better. Yes. Yeah? So no reason for you to be offended at that person. Because when you sin, who do you sin against? The Lord. You sin against God, right? Yes then God wants your attention, and God always uses people, right? Yes. I don't know. Don't be like looking at brother and sister who brings certain issues that you need to be corrected on, rebuked on by the Lord, reproved on. Don't, don't hate on them. Just go to the Lord and get yourself right. Amen. Then it will be resolved. So don't be an anti-speaker. And then lastly, last cowards are people who have no accountability. No accountability. They always blame others. Man, you don't want to be that Christian. Always blaming others. And especially in a group setting, in a church, you don't want to be that coward, right? Blaming others. You're the only one who wants to survive, right? You know? So we have, a lot of time it happens with children. Children are sitting. And sometimes we have four kids sitting down, and then three of them already admitted, you know, yeah, it was our fault. It was our fault. It was our fault. But one kid goes, you heard, it's their fault. <laughs> That's what happens all the time with many Christians. They, wanna, they want no accountability at all. Sure. Yeah. It's my child's fault. It's my wife's fault. It's my husband's fault. That's why I did it. And it's the pastor's fault. Right? It's always a pastor's fault. It's pastor's wife's fault. If you want to deflect all your responsibility, just remain a coward. Right? Yeah. Just remember, cowards always avoid it. Cowards always run away from any type of accountability. Be a man, right? Yes. Be a woman. Be a good Christian. Just accept your accountability. If you've done something wrong, accept it. If you've done something good, accept it. Give glory to God. Amen. Right? Give glory to God for everything that's good. Amen. And blame yourself for everything that's gone wrong. Yes, sir. That's it. Right? Many times you want to blame the devil, the world, and the flesh. Right? But that's you. Man, you should be like, you know what? You know, I don't want to be a coward. Always looking for excuses. You know? Onus is on me. 
it's my fault. I'm sorry. How hard is it for you to say it? It will be very hard if you're a coward and cowards are full of pride. Isn't it funny? The scared, scared, uh, people who's most scared, they're the most proud as well. You know what? No way. There's no way I could admit to people that I was wrong. You know, I have this position. And no one thinks you're that great anyways. But you always fool yourself that I am this person. And I'm this brother. I'm this sister. I'm this child. You know, people look up to me. Like, people are so, how should I say, they're confused. You know, <laughs> they think that they're more than what they are. I mean, the Bible says you and I are less than nothing, by the way. Then you and I, like, okay, if it's my fault, it's my fault. If it's something that I need to get right, I'm going to get right. If it's my responsibility, I'm going to take it as my responsibility, like my life. You, know, you got to commit to it as if you're committing your life to it in anything. Because who are you representing? You're representing Lord Jesus Christ. You're the testimony. Are you going to be that non-accountable, excused person rest of your life? Just own up to it. And when you own up to it, when you start taking responsibility, accountability, then there's a chance. There's a chance that you could get right. There's a chance that you could do something for the Lord. There's a chance that some good things in your miserable Christian life could happen now. And a lot of people always blame God for everything. Lord, I'm saved. You put me in such a hard life. You know? But the Lord's like, have you done anything according to what I told you to do? You take no accountability at all. You and I should never blame God for anything. Right. Cowards always do. Right. Never, ever blame God for anything. Don't blame your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your children either. Love this saying from Bob Jones Sr. The problem is with you. Amen. Once you take it to your heart that problem is with me, then you're going to take that accountability. And when you take that accountability, you're the one who's going to change. Amen. Not expecting other people to change. You have to change it from your heart. You have to change. You're the one who's got to take initiative. You're the one who's going to take that first step. You're the one who's got to read the Bible more. You're the one who's going to pray more. You're the one who's got to preach more. You're the one who's got to be a better husband, better wife, better child. You're the one who has to do it. Stop putting it off. Stop giving it to other people. Do it. As, I mean, they took the slogan, right? You know? You just do it. Yeah. Right. Take that step. Are you scared? Just do it. I mean, I've been scared many, many times in my life. You know, still do. But even though when I'm scared, I just do it because I'm just following the word of God, it always came out well. When I don't do it because I was scared, it always came out wrong. Yes. Right? Christians, you have to reflect and just rewind your Christian walk. Have you been a Christian coward? If you did, you know, just get right with the Lord. Amen. It's not the end of the world. You have another day to do something for the Lord. It's time for you to stop being an avoider. Stop being a simulator, right? Stop being an anti-speaker. And above all, take some accountability. Then you and I can walk our Christian walk as a soldier of Jesus Christ. Soldiers have accountability. Soldiers do as what the commander tells them to do. You just do it and march on, and your Christian walk will be better than before, and God can actually use you, and you can get something out of your Christian walk. Amen. Let's pray.